28 barriers, seven water jumps. They bypassed the water jump the first time around. 12 competitors have made it here to this final. And Ali, on paper at least with his time, which he ran in the regionals a couple weeks ago, would appear to be the favorite, but that's the man we're looking at, Brian Barraza, because of Houston being in contention for the team title and after that collegiate record in the 4 by 100 meter relay, a lot of pressure on this young man to really score well in this steeple. Well, and he had to sweat it out in the qualifying in the semifinals. He was not in that top group that automatically made it. He had to sit and watch and qualify on time. He was he was in the tunnel on his way out, and he said, there's nothing I can do. I just got to go warm up and hope that I made it. And he certainly did make it through, and he's looking to score some points for the Cougars. Also for BYU, Matt Owens, of course, the advantage there, being in Provo training and living there at altitude, coming down here pretty much to sea level. That's a bit of an advantage to anybody who is at a school that's at altitude, like Northern Arizona, University of Arizona, BYU, all of them have an advantage when they come down to uh, sea level. But it is cold and wet there. And with these barriers, it really, really can cause a problem. Some of the athletes you'll see step on the barrier, some not. But uh, you've got to have room to hurdle those barriers. And when the pace slows down, they get bunched up, it can be a real problem. Well, that was the first fast, uh, very first fast first lap, excuse me, 60, 65 seconds. Had a chance to listen to Absa Ali's post-race interview, and he said every race he is constantly working on that spacing that he talked about, accelerating into the hurdle, getting off the hurdle, creating creating that nice little bubble for yourself. It's just absolutely amazing to see these guys in big bunches get over those hurdles together. There is Absa Ali. Moved here from Ethiopia when he was 12 years of age. His mother and other sibling had been here in advance. He stayed in school in eastern Ethiopia and then came over here, got his American citizenship, and now competing for the Gophers. Raza appears to me to maybe be running a little bit scared, a little overly aggressive. He's running awfully quickly, which is like 8.20 pace right now. And I'm wondering if the coaching staff isn't a bit concerned that he's gone out so quickly. Okay, the steeple chase underway. Brian Barraza in the lead. Let's check in with what's going on later with John Anderson. All right, John, I look forward to all of that as the steeple chase continues and not much has changed. Brian Barraza really out there pushing the pace. He either knows something that no one but he and his coaches know, or he's in for a rude awakening later on when this fast pace starts to take its toll. Well, he says he's in the best shape of his life, and he said he gained a lot of confidence when he ran 13.39 in the 5K at the Mount Sac Relays. Jermaine Coleman of Eastern Kentucky is in second place by himself. And for Stanford, Stephen Fahey, the junior, at 4.13 at 1,500 meters, and Barraza looks great right now. And I'm thinking the rest of the runners in this field figure he's going to come back to them. Absa Ali has now worked himself from about 10th place into 3rd place. He sees what's going on, figuring I'm not sure he can keep this pace up, so I better get in position to take advantage when I can. So uh, about three laps remaining. And we'll step aside for a moment and get you caught up on some more field event action. Nothing has changed. Brian Barraza out there almost running a time trial. With Jermaine Coleman of Eastern Kentucky now starting to get a little bit of company from o from Obsa Ali and from Stephen Fahey of Stanford. But there has been no let up in the pace that Brian Barraza has been forging. He has slowed down ever so slightly, but you wouldn't tell it by the rest of the field. He's down now to around 8.30, 8.31, which would still be a big personal best for him. But he's looking for the 10 points for his team. Well, I just saw that second group kind of increase the tempo just a little bit. Looks like they might work together a little bit to gain a little bit of the ground on Barraza. It's so tough to be out front running by yourself like that. And in the slick weather here, that water, that water jump can be really, really treacherous. But I like what Barraza has done here. He's really challenged himself, put, put, the, put the stress on the rest of the field. He said, look, I'm going to run fast. You guys come catch me. He's run 8.40.25 this year, but his personal best, 8.32.48, and he's right about on that pace. And everybody's starting to realize that this guy is not coming back to them. 
but they're not making any headway as they come up to the bell. It is still Jermaine Coleman in second, Fahey now in third, Ali of Minnesota in fourth. Well, you can see this pace is really starting to take a toll on Barraza. He's really working hard. It's, oh, oh, no. He stuttered on that one. Just you could tell his steps were off about 10 meters out, and I just said these hurdles just look like they're having, he's having a hard time getting over them. Oh, my gosh, and those hurdles do not go down when you hit him. And that is a real shame because he's struggling to recover. Watch this as he barely got over the last, the next barrier. He just, clipped, just caught his toe. Those barriers don't move, and that's a long fall. So Ali now in the in the lead, followed by Coleman. Ali now with a, a commanding lead. Barraza is back now to about sixth or seventh place. So Houston was looking at ten points. And now they're hoping to get any points in this particular race. Hope that he's okay. Ali is going to win it over Coleman and Fahey of Stanford. And fourth, it was going to be Aiden Tooker of Syracuse. And what a shame, but that's what happens. He had really run hard and misjudged that, that barrier. He was just working so hard those last two laps to accelerate into the hurdle. Take that little jump. Oh, man, you just have to concentrate so hard. And it's hard to explain to people how you feel in this two in this two mile race over barriers. About 10 meters out, it's like, oh, which leg am I going to hurdle with? And he just was not, just didn't didn't have the strength to make the adjustments when he, once he got into the air. He, he severely changed his stride. He lengthened it for two or three and then realized it was too close and chopped it. And that's what happens in track and field. He scores no points, and he's probably going to be pretty sore tomorrow. Apsa Ali, on paper, the favorite wins it over Jermaine Coleman of Eastern Kentucky, Stephen Fahey of Stanford, finishing third, and the winner is downstairs with John. All right, thank you, Dwight. Apsa Ali, uh, ordinarily I'd ask you about crossing the finish line first, but I want to know your view of what happened out in front on that last lap. I don't know. I just saw that guy from uh, Houston go down. And I was, since ever since there we had a mile to go, I was trying to hunt him down easily. And I saw him go down, I was like, it's time to go. And I just went for it. I can't believe it happened. Oh my God. You can't believe that it happened that you win, or you can't believe in the fashion that we win? Both. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> I think that says enough, Dwight, right there. I think uh, the competitors, as much as brought all, all in shock at the way that ended.